I want to share with you the story of how we built Green Cities. It's a story in the making. I'll take you back a couple of months ago when we walked into this meeting and we invited up to Stockholm for a large major development area and they wanted our advice, our green advice. So we were thrilled. It was one of our first projects, so needless to say, we were a bit nervous. And I walk into this room, this large room without any windows in it, and in the middle, there's this huge table. Around it sits architects and uh, senior experts from the building companies. And they brief us regarding the project, and they say that the project is inspired by New York. We want high-rise buildings, broad esplanades, concrete. And I try to say it, but I'm cut off. And they say, we want glass, glass, people, action, things happening. <laughs> and this continues for a while until I stand up and I say, stop. And I can feel everybody's look, looking at me. I can, feel their, I can feel their eyes and I can just hear them thinking, what does this kid know about building cities? And what does this kid know or what does this kid got against New York? In Sweden, we have six months of winter. One of the biggest factors, if we perceive an area to be cold or uncomfortable, is wind. So we need to address this when we, do, when we design our cities. I guess that most of you can relate to this issue. Yes, I'm looking at you, Mon Mabul. <laughs> Probably half of you fell off your bike when you're riding to work this morning. And three ways of avoiding wind in our cities is removing high-rise buildings because they drag down the air from high altitudes down to street level and create turbulence. We don't want to build broad ways because they become wind tunnels. This is something we're experts in the Mauna actually. We have built straight roads with uh, really broad esplanades all the way from the ocean right down to the city center, cooling the whole city off. And thirdly, we need to have more trees and bushes in the city because they are our only natural protection uh, against the wind. They act as a barrier. Now, we started this company because we believe that we can create better cities in a greener way. One way is to look at the city as one system and, and combine it with our ecosystems. That way, we can, when we look at, for instance, a green roof, it's not only pretty, but it also prevents floods, cleans our air, and it reduces our energy costs pretty good. But unfortunately, society doesn't look at it this way. We only look at the price per square meters in our projects. That means that we're limited in a way because we cannot make investments now in green solutions and get high returns in the future. But why should you care? Because you're living in it. In 2014, Malmö was hit by a flood that cost us approximately 600 million kronos, and it won't be the last one. Scientists predict that the next coming decades, we will have increased rainfalls by almost 20%. Imagine that. <clears throat> yeah, so during this time, we have been able to work with architects, some of the most famous architects in Sweden, Vingors and Lillivars architects, and also building companies and municipalities. And they are listening to what we have to say. They have their ears towards the ground because there's a renewable momentum on the horizon. People are realizing that we are, we are building all the new major cities the same because they're inspired by New York. But we need to build green cities. We need to build green cities for humans, not for the cars. We need to build cities that are made of forests, not of concrete. Thank you.